Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the quality of our air. And so in our first couple videos we discussed the composition of air where we see that we have about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of everything else, the argon, carbon dioxide, water vapor, so on and so forth. And we've also seen in our other, um, other videos is that we have a number of different air pollutants. So we have our carbon monoxide, our sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and we also have a little bit of ozone. And so what we're going to do right now is talk about about how much of each of these pollutants is actually existent in our atmosphere and how much of these pollutants are needed to actually do damage on our health. But in order to do this, what we first need to do is talk about some units of concentration. So units of concentration. So let's start off with something easy, something that we probably already understand. So we know our atmosphere is about 21% oxygen. So if we use the unit percent, what we are really saying is parts per 100. So if I challenge you to take 21% and write it out into a fraction term, hopefully um, most of you would be able to come up with this term, 21 out of 100. So what we're saying is out of every 100 pieces of air, 21 pieces of those are oxygen. And so it's just a fraction, it's a relative fraction. I could also say I have 21 blue socks out of every 100 pairs of socks that I have. It's just a ratio and it's just an easy unit for us to talk to each other, communicate from human to human, while without saying 21 out of one every 100. We can just say it's 21%. Well, we can do the same thing for even smaller amounts of units. So these units that we need are parts per million or parts per billion in order to actually describe the concentration of our pollutants. So let's talk about carbon monoxide. So for carbon monoxide, what I could say is for a very standard amount of carbon monoxide in our atmosphere would be 0.0009%. But that is not a useful thing. You could not quickly tell me 0.0009% and for me to be able to magically come up with a fraction in my head. Instead, what we do is we have this phrase called parts per million. So I would say it is 9 ppm, where this is parts per million. So if you were to write it out in a fraction, you would say we have 9 pieces of carbon monoxide for every million, so 1 million down here, pieces of air. And so this is just an easier way, that by saying nine parts per million, this is just an easier way of one person communicating to another person how much of this pollutant is in the air. So we would say nine parts per million. Now if we had something even smaller, like um, NO2 or nitrogen dioxide, something very common for this one would be 0 0.100 ppm. Again, 0.1 ppm, that's okay, we can kind of quickly say that, but a lot of times people would actually prefer to say 100 ppb, or parts per billion. So if you were to write this out in terms of a fraction, you would say we have 100 pieces of NO2 per every billion pieces of air, so 1 billion, and three more zeros, pieces of air. And so what I need you to be able to do is to look at all these units, percent, PPM, PPB, and to very, very quickly convert them into a fraction so that you are automatically in your head understanding what I'm saying in a ratio in terms of pollutant per total air concentration so that we can quickly go through and discuss all these different pollutants that actually mean something, so in a substantial way. So in order to do this, let's go through a quick problem to make sure we're all on the same page. So what we want to say here, first things first, if you have 10 molecules of SO2 in 125,000 molecules of air, what is the SO2 concentration And I'm going to be specific here, in ppm. So I want you to take a second and try to solve this and come up with an actual answer. I want a number, okay? So for 10 molecules of SO2 in 125,000 molecules of air, what is the ppm? All right, let's see what, how you did. So personally, how I would solve this is I would automatically come up with a fraction here. So 10 molecules per every 125. So 10 molecules of SO2 for every 125,000 molecules of air, 
but we want this to be in ppm, so parts per million. So right away I'm going to set up another fraction. We're solving for this number up here per every million, so one million pieces of air. So we're just trying to get a relative fraction. So all we have to do is cross mul multiply, so I'm going to multiply this times this side, so times one million. We're going to multiply each side by that, so one million. So this side's going to cancel out, and we will be left with x, so we have x being equal to 80, and then the unit that we're looking for is ppm. So hopefully you came up with the answer of 80 ppm. So we would just say that we have an SO2 concentration of 80 parts per million, or 80 ppm. So now that we're all good here and we understand how to do our units of concentration, let's talk about this in terms of quality of air standards. Let's draw a little line here. So now we're moving on. So this is going to be air quality standards. Now, our standards depend on three very, very, very important factors. So our first one has to do with our concentration of air. How much of each component is there. So this is where we're talking about things in terms of percent or PPM or maybe even PPB. So how much of our pollutant is sitting in that pocket of air that we're analyzing. Second thing that's very, very important, your length of time or your exposure time. Are you outside for 24 hours a day breathing in this air? Are you only breathing in this air while you're running from one building to the next? How long are you actually exposed to this pollutant? And then the last time thing, which is actually important, it's more important than people would think, um, which is kind of funny, but it's your rate of breathing. And so if you're someone who is an athlete, if you work out a lot, you probably breathe more than someone else. If you are a blue collar person and you're working tons and tons and tons of hours, so a lot of those construction men, those guys with the big heavy muscles, they're breathing constantly at a much faster rate. And those same things with athletes, they're breathing at a much faster rate. So they're going while someone else is just going and so someone who's breathing really, really fast is breathing more and more and more of that pollutant in than someone else's. So in order to come up with these air quality standards, we had a number of brilliant scientists sit around and come up with standards and say, okay, for every hour that you are outside, you can only breathe in this amount of carbon monoxide or this amount of NO2. But it's super important that we understand where these standards come from. And so here I have a tiny little chart to kind of show you what these scientists have agreed on to be our normal standards. So let's just look at our first one. So just look at our carbon monoxide right here. So there's two different numbers we can look at here. The first one is one hour and the second one is eight hours. So if you are going to be exposed to carbon monoxide for one hour, your body can actually handle a concentration of about 35 ppm, which is a lot. I mean, that's actually a very high amount of carbon monoxide that your body could handle. However, if you were going to be exposed to it for eight hours of time, you would not be able to handle 35 ppm. 35 ppm would knock you out, you'd pass out, and you might die. But if you're going to be exposed to it for eight hours and you're only exposed to a concentration of nine ppm, your body would be likely to survive and you'd be okay. It's not great for you. You might get a headache, you might get slightly dizzy, but you could potentially, in theory, handle something of up to nine hours. So let's move on to something different. So something like sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide actually has the inverse relationship of carbon monoxide. So if you're exposed to sulfur dioxide for an hour, your body can only handle a concentration of 0.075 ppm. But if you're exposed to it for a longer period of time, your body can slowly metabolize and slowly adapt to it, and you can actually handle a concentration of about 0.5 ppm. It's not a lot more, but it is a little bit more, so if you're out there for a longer time, you can handle it just a little bit more. Again, I would highly encourage you to limit the amount of exposure to any of these. And the last two are pretty simple for NO2 and ozone. For ozone, if you're exposed to something for eight hours, you can only handle a ppm of 0.075. So if we were to actually to compare our PPM or our concentration of ozone compared to our concentration of carbon monoxide, I think right away we would be able to see that ozone or O3 is 130 times more dangerous than carbon monoxide is. 
And so even though it is something really, really tiny and we have a small amount of it in our atmosphere, it is so much more lethal than the carbon monoxide is. Our body does not know what to do with ozone. Ozone is super good for us up high, high, high up in the atmosphere, but when it's down here and we're breathing in and out, our body as humans cannot handle it. And so this brings me to one more thing. So depending on where you live, the concentration or the amount of exposure that you have to all these different things, especially ozone, is very, very different. So let me point out um, something for each of these, for a number of different cities. So let's start off with Boston. So in Boston, on a, on a daily, or excuse me, on an annual basis, so a yearly basis, they have zero unhealthy days in terms of ozone. So they rarely are exposed. People who live in Boston are rarely exposed to a number of ozone. But however, if we went to Chicago, in Chicago, they actually have about 10 bad days per year. If we moved on to Houston, Houston has 21 bad days per year. If we move to LA, LA actually has 43 bad days a year. So in, in LA, about a month and a half out of every single year, you are highly exposed to too much ozone, which is really, really bad. However, Seattle, which is where my best friend lives, so I'm super happy about this, you only have two unhealthy days per year. So depending on where you live, a lot of different health effects can happen. It will matter how what you're breathing in, what you're breathing out, what you're exposed to on a daily basis in terms of your troposphere and your stratosphere, but it really, really matters on what you're exposed to on a daily basis. So we're gonna touch up with this again, but I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind that where you live highly, highly affects how unhealthy your lifestyle is. So take care of yourself, have a good day.